the director of possibility from Global Camps Africa with us tonight. languages that are spoken in our camp, COSA being one of them. The most prominent language is Zulu, and so it's been fun to learn a little bit of the language. I forget it as soon as I get back home. Uh, but I wonder if you all would do me a big favor. One of the things that the children do in camp, constantly we have feedback, and the counselors are saying, is it all okay? Is everything okay? Is everything good? And the answer to that usually is, ching ching. You put two thumbs up and you go ching ching. Now, I think we need some feedback to these ladies tonight who have been dancing. I want to say, is everything good? Yay! Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, briefly, I want to touch, touch on the need, and I don't think that there's any surprise to you all about what the need is. Um, there's about 11 million orphan, AIDS orphans in South Africa right now. In a few short years, by 2010, we expect to have 20 million. AIDS orphans. And these are 20 million children that are being raised without love, without boundaries, without someone caring for them, someone teaching them, someone guiding them. They're hungry, they have no place to sleep, they resort to crime to be able to survive. And I think leaving a legacy of 20 million children without that kind of love and guidance and support is just not right. And I think all of us throughout the world owe that to those children and owe it to our children and our grandchildren to do something about it. Let me give you a little bit of background about Global Camps Africa. And I tell you the background because I think it shows a lot about the power of one. This AIDS pandemic is so huge that we're just daunted by it. What can we do? There's nothing we can do. And there was a man that was in Reston, Virginia, and he was an attorney by profession. And he was in the Peace Corps in Ethiopia in the early 60s. And he always wanted to get back to Africa. And at 62, he said, I'm turning in my ticket. I'm going to quit being an attorney anymore. And I don't have to say this. He's not rich by any stretch of the imagination, except for that he has tenacity and he has generosity. But what he did was he, he turned in his ticket. He's not going to be an attorney anymore. He got on a plane and flew to Johannesburg with an idea to start a camp. I think many of you may have been to camps in the United States and your children have, and you know that it has an impact. So he went to Johannesburg, and he needed to figure out where he was going to get the children from. So he went to a social services agency. It's called HIVSA. Again, it's a small mom and pop operation. When I say small, she has 40,000 um, patients a year. It's a young woman named Michelle who started it herself. And she said, sure, I'll partner with you. I will screen, and I will find the children for you. So he has a place to get the children. So he goes to Johannesburg University and he talks to them and he says, can I have some of your college kids and I will train them to be counselors? And they said, sure, that sounds like a great idea. So he brought in a world-class trainer to train the counselors. Then he got in the car and drove around the countryside. He found a piece of property to rent, got the property rented. And so in a few short weeks, he had the counselors, he had the kids, he had the property, he had them trained and he was ready to go. So within, I say probably about two months, we launched our first camp. And it was a, kind of a test to see if it would work with the sort of American camp system work in South Africa. And it started with 135 boys, and it was a 10-day camp. And it's based on the United States camp system in that they have swimming and, or, and, and activities, adventure, and a lot of things where they kind of pull together as teamwork. But the one key that we have that's different is we have life skills education, and we teach them how to protect themselves. We teach them about getting tested for AIDS. We teach them that if they do get tested, it's not a death knell, that you can live a long life if you take the medication. There's a lot of discrimination in South Africa. People do not want to get tested, because if they get tested, they have to take the medication. And if they take the medication, then people know they have AIDS, and then people don't want to have anything to do with them. So it's a real education to try to get these children turned around. 
But I will tell you, because I've been to camp several times, in 10 days, you see a massive turnaround. It's just amazing. So to me, the story is that was, in 2004 was our first camp. We've had 27 camps now, 3,500 children, one person, one idea. So I say, it is possible there are things that we can do. <clears throat> um, the camp is, uh, as I said, just like United States camp, we have the fun and activities. Swimming, for example. The kids aren't going to learn to swim and then go back to Soweto and swim. They don't have swim pools there. But the purpose of teaching them that is to teach them that, they're, that they can overcome their fear. There's something they're terrified about, they don't think that they can do it, and they do, and they're so proud when they're done. These are kids that have been beat down. Nobody's ever said they're worth anything. Nobody's said they've ever said there's anything good about them. And the second you say something like, good job, you see this thing that comes over their faces, and you know there's just this blossom that's waiting inside. And, and so it, that's what I see that what's happening with the camps. But one of the keys that we do is you don't take them up out of Mahalasburg for 10 days of adventure and get them to have this really wonderful high and then they go back to Soweto and nothing's changed. We have Saturday's Kids Clubs in Soweto. So we have the same kind of programs with adventure and life skills and counseling. And so the kids come there for free and they get meals. And we have about 700 kids that come every week to the Kids Club. So it, it's ongoing. Uh, many of the kids that come to camp, you know, you can't, can't, obviously it's such a large problem. What we try to do is teach them that now they're teachers. They've been given an opportunity. So they go back and their role, their job, and they understand this, that they know that they've been given a chance and they really accept the fact that they're going to go back and they're going to teach what they've learned. So that's a really beautiful part of the lesson. Uh, I have a letter that I, I had some letters. The children wrote letters to you all. And we had some, we tried to go through them last night, and we'd say, oh, that's a really good one. And then I'd read the next one, and we go, oh, that's a really good one. And we went through about 15 of them. I know I couldn't stand up here reading all of them, so we just picked one. And this is a camp. Our campers are from 10 to 15 years old, so it would have been somewhere in that, that age group. And um, this is a note, actually, that the camper wrote to, they call them Bocellers. That's the counselors, the camp counselors. But to give you an idea. Camps is an, oh, by the way, they drew art with it as well, so they get your little artwork. <laughs> Camps is an Ani gave, the love, gave me love and hope I never got before Camp is an Ani. Camps is an Ani is a dream fulfilled. Camps is an Ani is my hope. Thank you, Bocellis. You became more than strangers. You were to us mothers and sisters. You loved me even before you knew me. You loved me for me. You taught me that with love, passion, hard work, and determination, all is possible. Thank you for your wonderful food. It was tasty and very healthy. Thank you for giving us hope. Thank you for the sponsors for making this camp possible. Though I don't know you by name, I am boldly saying you are my hero. That's the children. So, I just wanted to be able to sort of send the message of what it's like, what it feels. And, and I would say, in closing, that Nelson Mandela has said that women are the face of AIDS in Africa. And I'd say, let us unite with the beautiful music of Hilde Girls tonight and use the universal language of music to sing out our message of healing and hope around the world. Let's sing for the beautiful children of Africa. Let all of your voices be heard. Sing, my sisters, sing. <laughs>